Please give a warm welcome to our good friend, Janet Polly. Thank you, Jan. It's so nice to be with you here tonight. I want to tell you a little bit about my journey that has brought me here. It all started in 1972 when I began having intermittent abdominal pain that was very severe. When I got the pain, I couldn't walk or move. At first, I only had the pain maybe once a year. But then it became more often. And uh, it would feel like there was something moving in my abdomen just prior to the onset of the pain. And the pain would last for five or 10 minutes, and then it would go away as suddenly as it had begun. And after the pain was gone, I had no abdominal tenderness or soreness at all. Naturally, I saw many doctors about this pain, but no one thought it was anything serious. In 1980, I was working in charge of an intensive care unit. As the pain became more frequent, I went to a surgeon whom I worked with, and I knew that he was an excellent diagnostician, and he was also a good friend of mine. I described my pain to him, and he said, Janet, in 40 years of practicing medicine, I have never heard of a pain like the one you describe. He says, it may be the little umbilical hernia that you have, but I don't think it's anything to worry about. As time went on, I became very tired, and my fatigue quickly worsened. Then I began having low back pain that would come on in the afternoons. I went to my internist for a physical. I went to my gynecologist. I even went to a urologist. All of them could find nothing wrong. My internist thought it was just maybe the stress of working in an ICU that was causing my fatigue. I had been working for several years in charge of the intensive care unit when I got the pain one day as I was leaving the hospital. And as usual, I couldn't move or walk. This was first, the first time the pain had ever come on me while I was at work. And this was very alarming to me because we had cardiac patients in our ICU. And when one of them developed a uh, dangerous heart rhythm or a straight line, I had four minutes to do whatever I was going to do to save our patient's life. Since I was in charge, I was the one who made the decision to defibrillate, do CPR, give medication. I was in charge until the doctor arrived. I knew that if this pain would hit me during a crisis in our unit, that somebody could lose their life because I was standing there not able to move. So I went back to the surgeon and I told him that whatever it was that was causing the pain, I wanted him to fix it. If it was the little umbilical hernia, please repair it. So he told me to put myself on the surgery schedule and on the morning of July 31, 1980, I was wheeled into the operating room for what I anticipated would be a 20-minute procedure. When I woke up several hours later, the surgeon was standing at my bedside waiting to tell me that I had malignant lymphoma, cancer of the lymph system. He explained that surgery was not a treatment modality for lymphoma, so he didn't remove any of the tumors. He just took biopsies and sent them to pathology to confirm his diagnosis. He told me that what had probably been causing my pain was a large tumor that was pressing on my colon 
And at times, it would situate itself in such a way that my colon would telescope on itself. And this is when I would have the severe pain. He felt so bad that he had missed this cancer. He told me he went home and read up on lymphoma until 2 o'clock in the morning. A few days after surgery, I was sent to MD Anderson Hospital in Houston. This is the University of Texas Cancer Treatment Center and is the largest of its kind in the U.S. There I was told that not only was my cancer widespread, but that it was incurable. I prayed that the Lord would give me two years to live so that I could attend my youngest daughter's high school graduation because I had attended her brothers and sisters and I knew how bad she would feel if I wasn't there. I was treated at MD Anderson for four years. I, uh, I even had um, investigational drugs. One of the drugs that they gave me required that I sign six pages of consent forms releasing everybody in the world from any liability if I died from taking the drug. After four years of treatment at MD Anderson, my doctor told me that my disease was out of control and he had nothing more to offer me. But he assured me that he would keep looking for something for me. Everyone I knew had been praying for me for four years. But now I had to seriously consider the possibility that I might become another cancer fatality as so many thousands of others had been. I had large tumors in my neck and a tumor the size of a tennis ball under my left arm. Shortly after that, I received a letter from a friend of mine in California who's also a nurse. And in her letter, she included a sandwich bag of some green powder, a brochure, and an audio tape. She said in her letter that she didn't know if she believed in this stuff or not, but she was taking it and she was feeling good. However, she never said a word about the possibility of this green powder helping my cancer. Later, she told me that she had felt compelled to send this green powder and the information to me. I must tell you that my orientation to medicine was conventional. In nursing school, we had been taught that the only thing that food supplements do for us is to give us very expensive urine. We were taught that if you eat three well-balanced meals a day, that this food will supply all the nutrients that you need. Our family ate well. We ate a lot of fruits, vegetables, legumes, and whole grains. I was thankful that I knew how important a good diet was and that I, and I tried to feed my family healthfully. I never took any kind of supplements, never went near a health food store. Green powder was certainly not anything that interested me. In fact, if the Lord hadn't tapped me on the shoulder and told me to listen to the audio tape that my friend had sent, I probably would have eventually just thrown all these materials away and uh, never given it another thought. I listened to the tape and heard a woman tell about how she had been diagnosed with breast cancer. They had removed her breast, and in time, the cancer had spread to the lymph nodes in her neck. As her story continued, she became bedridden and, and was on pain medicine around the clock. Some friends of hers brought her a jar of this green powder 
just in hopes that it might help her pain. She began using it, and in a few months, her doctor couldn't find any trace of the cancer. Well, most stories that sound too good to be true are usually just that. I thought that possibly this green powder must be some kind of fraud and quackery. But I wondered why the woman on the tape, who identified herself as a farm wife, would tell a story like this. My doctor, who was a well-known cancer researcher and whose picture had just appeared in Time magazine, was looking for something for me. And surely, if this wonderful green powder was out there, he would have known and told me about it. Long story short, I sent off for a jar of this green powder without any expectations that it would do anything for me. I began taking it, and in just four days, the large tumor under my arm, which had the consistency of a hard rubber ball, began to soften. And it was the first tumor that went completely away. Within a short time, all my tumors were gone. I watched them melt away right in front of my eyes. No one was more amazed than I was, except maybe my doctor. I started on the green powder in the middle of July, and around the 1st of November, I got a call from my doctor's clinic asking me to come back and start on an investigational drug that I had already taken, but they thought they had improved it. So I put my jar of green powder in a plain brown paper bag and took it with me and went back up to MD Anderson. I ran into my doctor in the hallway and he looked at me and he said, what happened to all those lumps? And we went in the examining room and he looked at me more closely. He said, what have you been doing? Taking snake venom? And I said, no, I've been taking this. And I pulled out my green powder. I told him about the lady on the tape. And he was so excited. He said, you know, we've tested a lot of plant extracts here, but I don't think we've ever tested barley. He said to go down and have a blood test to see what my white count was doing. Our white blood cells are the soldiers of our blood. They fight against disease. The radiation that I had been treated with had caused me to have bone marrow depression. This meant that all my blood components were low. My white count, red count, platelets, all of them. And I had been told <coughs> that this damage was permanent. And after four years of abnormal blood counts, I thought they were probably right. I also had bone marrow biopsies that showed this damage. So I had the blood test, and it turned out that for the first time in four years, I had a normal blood count. My doctor was so pleased. He told me that I didn't need to be in their investigational drug program he gave the green powder credit for both my remission from lymphoma and my bone marrow's return to normal. Later, I had another bone marrow biopsy that confirmed my healthy bone marrow. I believe that Ames green powder was a direct answer to prayer that were offered, the prayers that were offered in my behalf. I never went out looking for it, but the Lord, in his great mercy, compelled my friend to send it to me. I thank God every day for allowing me to live this long. 
Looking back on my experience with the green powder, I have learned some lessons. Even though I was eating healthfully, my cancer continued to worsen. When I began taking Ames Green Powder, in just four days, my largest tumor began to soften. What this told me was that there was something in this green powder, maybe something that is yet to be identified. But when my immune system got this, it began to function effectively in my behalf. I think that whatever it was is either difficult or impossible to get in our day-to-day -day diet. So at this point in my life, I started down a new road of understanding. I want to share with you a little about what I've learned. And this may sound just like common sense to you, but you'd be surprised how few health professionals and just ordinary people understand this. I certainly didn't have a good grasp of this concept until the green powder came into my life and I saw what feeding my cells concentrated nutrients did for me. Aim Barley Life can be called a concentrated food, a concentrated whole food because it's made of the powdered juice of the young barley grass. We could never sit down and just eat a whole pile of barley grass, but we can get the nutrients that grass provides in just a teaspoon or two of the juice powder. Each two teaspoons serving of barley life contains two to three times more nutrients than are found in a typical serving of green vegetables. This serving also contains a complete profile of all the amino acids, which are considered the building blocks of life. Because Aim Barley Life is a whole food concentrate, it supplies a broad spectrum of nutrients that our bodies need vitamins, minerals, enzymes, protein, antioxidants, and chlorophyll, among others. These need to stay healthy and to heal and restore. Our bodies were designed to take in nutrients from foods. When barley life is taken on an empty stomach, it goes right through into the small intestine where it is quickly assimilated. Because barley life is mixed with juice or water, it is in a liquid form. And this makes it very easy for the body to assimilate it. You can also put barley life under your tongue. And when you do that, it goes directly into the bloodstream, bypassing the stomach. So this is very good for anyone who is nauseated. When these nutrients arrive in the small intestine, they act as transporter molecules for each other. And they quickly cross the intestinal wall, get into the bloodstream, and from there, they penetrate our cells. It doesn't matter how many vitamins or minerals you take. If they don't get to the cells, they never do you any good at all. Cells make up our body's tissues. Our tissues make up our organs. Our life and health depend upon our having healthy cells. God made our cells in such a remarkable way that most of the help they need is for us to supply them with nutrients that they can use. If we eat good, healthful foods, then our cells can do their jobs. But if we eat poor quality foods, then our cells weaken, they struggle to perform their duties, and eventually 
poor health will result from poor quality foods. We truly reap what we sow. Our foods are to our bodies what gasoline is to our cars. High octane fuel will allow our bodies to function smoother and run a longer time. Ain Barley Life is a high octane fuel. So, as you can see, it is the quality of the foods that we eat that determines the quality of our health. When we feed ourselves good, healthful foods, they can begin to heal and restore from the inside out. This is so simple and yet so profound. This makes sense to me. Doesn't it make sense to you? I've often thought as I'm drinking my barley life how happy my cells are going to be picking and choosing the nutrients they need right at that time. Drugs can quash symptoms, but they rarely correct the cause of the symptoms. Our bodies are so fearfully and wonderfully made that very often when we start feeding ourselves the nutrients they depend on, they can begin to heal and restore. Drugs act very quickly, but allowing our cells to begin healing takes a little longer. But in the end, this is the better way. Nutritionists in our government are saying that we need six to nine fruits and vegetables every day. Studies have shown that most people eat only two to three fruits and vegetables a day. Did you know that three servings of Aim Barley Life, that would be only six teaspoons, supply the nutrients equivalent to six to nine servings of fruits and vegetables. We don't need any hype or clever ads or seven doctors standing up here to tell us that Aim Barley Life is a wonderful cell food. The results people get when they take Barley Life speak for themselves. The time and care that has been put into growing Ames Barley Life results in a green juice powder that is teeming with nutrients. For those who like to eat fast food, I'm here to tell you that Aim Barley Life is the fastest food there is. <laughs> you just put a couple of teaspoons into a glass of water and juice. Can't get any faster than that. If we want to live our lives to the fullest, experience good energy levels while we are young and into old age, and avoid debilitating illness, then we need to start thinking about these things while we are young. How can we maintain the health that we have now? How can our bodies remain strong and healthy? What single thing can we take that will provide ourselves with the nutrients they need? I believe that adding Aim Barley Life to our daily diet is the key. How much barley life should we take? Well, the answer to that is fairly simple. If a person is young and in good health and wants to stay that way, he might take two teaspoons twice a day. On the other hand, if someone has a life-threatening illness, then they might want to take two tablespoons four times a day. Everyone else is somewhere in between. Because barley life is a whole food and not a drug, people can try different amounts until they get up to the level where it provides the nutrients that they need to give them the level of health and energy that they're looking for. 
AIM has recently come out with a new form of Barley Life, which is called Barley Life Extra. This is the regular good Barley Life, but with fruit juice powders added. This is for children and adults who enjoy the sweeter taste, but who also want to get the nutritional benefits of Ames Barley Juice Powder. Some mothers are making popsicles out of it. Babies enjoy it in their bottles, and it makes an excellent sports drink. Numerous green drinks have flooded the market, often labeled super green foods. Some of these are nothing more than finely ground dried barley grass, which is cheap to make and allows for a high profit margin. They cannot and will not deliver the kind of results that drinking a concentrated green juice powder will. There are many green juice powders on the market today. You've probably noticed that. I want to give you seven reasons why I believe that AIM Barley Life is the best green juice powder on the market today. Number one, it takes about 15 pounds of barley grass to make one pound of highly concentrated barley juice powder. This is a 15 to one ratio. Other, gra other green products boast a 33 to one ratio from grass to juice. This figure is misleading. These products utilize inefficient methods to remove the juice from the grass. And as a result, more pounds of grass are used to yield less juice. Some products claim to be better because they have alfalfa or wheat added to their juice. However, a simple look as some of the key nutrients in barley life, such as beta carotene, calcium, protein, and chlorophyll, shows that the barley life quality and nutrient content is very high. Number two, AIM Barley Life's crops are grown by organic methods in the rich soils of northern Alberta, Canada. It is important that barley is grown where the ground is clean, has never been heavily farmed, and where there are no nearby smokestack industries. Rainwater supplies the moisture for AIM barley life rather than water that has been chlorinated and often has picked up pollutants from current or past industrial endeavors. Number three, AIM Barley Life crops are harvested when the plants are bursting with nutrition at about 10 to 12 inches high, just before the plant uses its nutrients to make the stalk and the grain. Cheaper products allow much taller leaves for more volume, but far fewer nutrients. Number four. Ames barley crops are cut only once. Lower quality products utilize second and third cuttings, which increase the profit, but with a drastic loss of nutrient content. Number five, Ames barley life is harvested in such a way that the grass never touches the ground. Only seven minutes elapse between cutting and juicing. Other products allow the harvested grass to sit for hours before juicing, which seriously depletes nutrient content. Number six, because of utilizing a new state-of-the-art spray dryer, it makes the juice powder more dense. It now makes a five gram serving of barley life 
available in only two teaspoonfuls. It used to take three teaspoonfuls to make a five gram serving. Number seven, Aim Barley Life is the lowest cost, highest quality barley powder available. Despite its superior quality, it costs as low as 55 cents for a two teaspoon serving. Compare this to others that cost as much as 73 cents for a one teaspoon serving.